we're talking these days together about the question, what is the meaning of life? Uh, why are we here? What's the point of it all? Uh, how did we end up on this planet passing the time the way we're doing? What is the meaning of life? And uh, yesterday, you remember, we likened our situation to a group of us getting onto a bus and traveling along the freeway at about 65 miles an hour and uh, being happy for the first hour or so while we broke out the drinks and shared the sandwiches, but then beginning to get worried as hour after hour followed and then as day after day followed and we kept asking the question, where are we going? Uh, why are we on this bus? And nobody seemed able to answer the question. They all just kept on saying, oh, keep on cleaning the windows, keep on drinking, keep on eating, keep on sleeping. Don't worry about such unimportant questions as that. And really, that's the same situation as we are in here on this planet. The planet is traveling through space at thousands of miles an hour. It does admittedly happen to be on one orbit at the moment, but uh, none of us know who controls that orbit or what controls that orbit, and uh, we can't guarantee that it'll stay on that orbit uh, forever. Uh, but the most important thing is uh, many of us have no idea where it's going, and yet we are uh, on a bus that is, as it were, traveling towards a concrete wall, and in about 70 or 80 years, it's going to smash into that concrete wall, and uh, you and I are going to smash with it. And yet we seem bent on avoiding the question, where are we going? Or why are we here? It seems just a piece of almost deliberate deception on our part to keep from thinking about that question. Uh, our children, of course, are not as sophisticated or, should we say, as naive as we are about these things, and they still think about this kind of thing. Unfortunately, many of us have so mesmerized ourselves or so become so hypnotized with our own activities here on this planet that uh, we have almost persuaded ourselves not to think about this kind of thing. I don't know if you were uh, the same as I was, but at times my mother would say to me, oh, uh, don't think about that kind of thing. Don't think too deeply. Uh, you can think too much. And of course, the truth is you can't think too much. We've been given minds and we've been given reasoning powers, and it's up to us to think about these things. It's vital that we do. It's what distinguishes us from the animal. The animal keeps on going without ever thinking why he's doing it. But we are human beings. We have minds that can reflect on what we're doing. We have self-critical faculties, and it's vital for us to apply to this issue of life and its meaning and its purpose, the same reflective, critical, analytical powers that we apply to our everyday lives. So that's why I'm inviting you to think with me a little these days about the question, what is the meaning of life? Uh, one of our English poets uh, put it like this. He was, of course, a he houseman whom many of us know as a Greek professor in one of our leading universities in past years, and he wrote poetry, and one of his poems runs like this. Yonder see the morning blink, the sun is up, and up must I, to wash, and dress, and eat, and think, and look at things, and talk, and think, and work, and God knows why. Oh, often have I washed and dressed, and what's to show for all my pain? Let me lie a bed and rest. Ten thousand times I've done my best, and all's to do again. And though we may at first sight say, oh, what pessimism, what dreadful pessimism, or some of us might wonder, well, what poetry, or what doggerel, and yet it expresses very well what many of us think in these days. We get up in the morning, and we think yonder, see the morning blink. The sun is up, and up must I, to wash and dress and eat and drink, and look at things and talk and think and work, and God knows why. 
Why are we here? What is the purpose of it? You might be like many of us. You might say to yourself, well, I don't know what the purpose is. I don't know what it is, but I can see one thing, that there's only so much in this world for everybody, and I'd better get my piece of it as well as I possibly can. And, of course, it's reinforced by our parents' encouragement when we're uh, young. They say, look, if you don't look after yourself, nobody else is going to look after you. And we get it beaten into our heads very firmly that the basic need we have is to supply ourselves with food and shelter and clothing, because that at least man has been able to do ever from his early days in the Iron Age or when he was a caveman. And so we grew up with the strong realization and strong compulsion that we had better, whatever reason we're here for or whatever purpose there is to life, there's nobody is going to look after us except ourselves. And so we had better make sure that we get the right kind of education that will give us the right kind of job, that will give us the right kind of money, that will enable us to buy the right kind of food and the right kind of clothing and the right kind of shelter so that at least we can stay alive. And so many of us are dominated by simply that survival mode. That's what we're in. We're just in a survival mode. Uh, if you say to us, why are you eating? Why are you sleeping? Why are you drinking? We say, look, I don't know, but I can see this, that I won't be doing it very long if I don't give myself to ensuring some kind of physical security for my life. And so we very quickly descend from the big philosophical question of why are we here to the very practical, physical necessity of uh, keeping ourselves here. And so we begin to give ourselves, as you know, to school and to getting the best kind of education that we can and you know how that tends to dominate our thoughts. We certainly think about our abilities and artistic ability or our writing ability or our mechanical or practical ability. And we certainly think of the things that we might be able to do for humanity. But overall, we tend to be dominated by one thought. How do I ensure that I continue getting the next bite into my mouth? And that tends to dominate our school years, you know. Then we go to school, we graduate, or we get to university and we graduate, or we go to technical college and we get out of that. And finally comes the uh, big real world, as we were told. Uh, we will soon go out into the big wide world and we'll meet life as it really is. And so that's what we do. And we get out into the job and you know how we scramble to parlay our degree or our academic qualifications or our training for the best job that we can and then we try to ensure that it will be permanent and we try to win tenure if we're in education or in faculties or we try to win stability from guarantees by the union or by employers but we spend the next years of our lives trying to ensure security and trying to ensure the food and clothing that is needed to keep us alive. And so that begins to dominate our lives and actually not only dominate our lives, but it becomes almost a neurotic preoccupation that we have. And so many of us, if we're asked, uh, why are we alive? We say we're alive uh, to keep ourselves alive. In other words, if you ask us, why are you getting a good education? We say we're getting a good education so that we can get a good job, so that we can get food, so that we can stay alive, so that we can have children, so that we can give them a good education, so that they can get good jobs, so that they can get food, so that they can stay alive, so that they can have children, so that they can get a good education, so that they can... And so on. Forever and ever ad absurdum. Until we begin to realize, wait a minute, is that why we're alive? in order to stay alive. Well, maybe you'd think about that. 
and we could talk about it a little more tomorrow.